Most Cisco small business routers, switches, and access points come with an available web user interface, UI. This user-friendly interface provides menus and other visual options for a point-and-click approach to configuration and management. Experienced users sometimes prefer using the command line interface, CLI, to set up and manage devices. It can be quicker and more efficient if you're familiar with the commands. In addition, CLI can provide advanced configuration options that may not be available or easily accessible through the web UI. If you're interested in learning more about CLI and how it works with your CBS switch, this is a good introduction for beginners. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll go over some basics for accessing and using CLI on a Cisco Business 350 series switch. Next. To access the web UI of the CBS 350, open a web browser and enter the IP address of the switch. In this case, that's the private IP address of 172.19.1.246. Log in with your credentials. Before you can access the switch using CLI, you need to enable either Telnet or SSH on this web UI, since both are disabled by default. It is recommended that you use SSH, as it is more secure than Telnet. To enable SSH, navigate to Security, select TCP slash UDP services, and then SSH service. Click Apply. To save the settings permanently, click on the red blinking Save icon. Now you can access the CLI with PuTTY. PuTTY is a free and open source terminal emulator. It supports various protocols, including SSH, allowing users to establish secure remote connections to servers and network devices. By default, the CLI display shows a black background with a white font. I've changed a few of these options in my PuTTY settings for easy visibility under Cisco, so I will select that option. You should choose the default. Enter the IP address of the switch and click Open. You can see that I'm getting Login as a prompt. I can either click Enter to bypass this Login As, or I can enter the username of the switch. In this case, I'll click Enter. Next, I'll enter the username and password to gain access to the switch. You can see by the prompt that I've successfully accessed the switch. I'll type the command Exit to get out. I'll launch PuTTY and load these settings once more. Type the IP address of the switch. Click Open. Even if I had typed the username in the Login As field, it would still ask for it. I'll type in the same username and password and press Enter. That extra step comes on this Cisco Business 350 series switch by default. You can make a simple configuration change to this option to avoid that extra step at future CLI logins. Head back to the web UI of the switch. Under the SSH server menu, choose SSH user authentication. Take note of the SSH user authentication methods by password and public key. These are the two alternatives. I'll use the first choice, SSH user authentication by password. This executes the SSH client user authentication with the existing username and password. Click Apply and then the red blinking Save icon to save these settings even after a reboot. Connect to the PuTTY application again. Load the parameters, enter the IP address of the switch, and click Open. A Login As option shows on the screen. Enter your username and press Enter. Great, the username prompt is skipped. Instead, you see the password prompt. Input the password to obtain access to the switch. The CLI can now be used to execute some basic commands. To see the switch description and temperature details, type show system. To view the switch's firmware, type show version. In my case, the current active image version is 3.3.0.16. Type Show VLAN to see the VLAN configurations. 
there are no VLANs configured on this switch besides the default of VLAN 1. These are just a few examples to get you started. Now you know how to access CLI and use some basic commands on the Cisco Business 350 series switch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.